Hello guys, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we are going to explore the material editor. So to get going, um, there's actually two different ways that you guys can get to your material editor. Um, the first way is going to be through your manage tab and that will open up the material browser or any component that you guys click on within your model space that you want to add a material to. So I'm going to show you guys both ways um, on how to get to it and we'll talk through um, just some of those parameters that you guys are able to set when you guys are either selecting a existing material or if you guys are looking to create a new material. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and start off um, with the option to get to your material editor through your manage tab. So what you guys want to do is go up to the top here. You want to find your manage and you want to click on that tab. Once you guys click on that tab, if you go over to your left side, um, you guys will see materials as your first option within this toolbar. So I'm just going to click once on materials. Once I click on materials, it will bring up my material browser. So this is where you guys would either, if you guys are doing it through the manage tab and going to your material browser, then you guys are probably um, pre-lease setting up your materials. So if you guys are doing this option, um, this is where you guys would create those materials that you guys plan to use within your model space. Or um, if you guys are looking to create a custom material, you guys can go through um, the manage tab to do that as well. So to get started, just a few things you guys want to pay attention to um, in your tab. Um, the first thing is your project materials. So on your left hand side, this will always give you guys a list of materials that are already pre um input into Revit. So these are just going to be, you know, basic materials, common materials. So depending on the Revit that you guys are using or the year, um, this list may look different, but um, these are here as just um, default materials that you guys are able to quickly select um, if they meet your need and come out of your material browser. So if you guys just scroll down here, I'm just going to scroll a little bit um, you guys can see all of the materials that are available here if you guys come down um, to your options here at the bottom the first option that you guys have um, is going to be if you guys want to create a custom library so just like we see this here as our default default library um, we are a also able to click on the fly out and create a new library as well so if that's something that you guys would want to do within your project you do have the option to do that as well um, the second option um, here with the circle and the plus sign um, that's going to give you guys the option if you click on the fly out to create a new material or to duplicate a material that you guys have selected under project materials and its assets, or you guys can duplicate using shared assets, which um, has to do with um, what parameters a material has within the asset browser, which I will get to here shortly. So you guys have the option to choose from um, these three options here. And then the third option, which I won't click on right now, is going to be your asset browser. So if you guys click on that, um, which we will click on here in a second, you guys will get a complete different list of um, default materials that Revit has available for you guys to use. And this can be anything from wall covering to paint, um, brick material, um, concrete, whatever you guys may be looking for. If you guys do not want to create a custom material and go through that process um, the asset browser has a lot of different materials available um, for you guys to use okay now so that is going to be the options that you guys see on your left side if we move to our right side this is going to be all the information pertaining to whatever material you guys have selected here in the project material so for instance if I select this um, tile porcelain four inches you guys will notice that this will change over here so depending on 
which material you guys have selected. These options will look different. The um, default for these will look different. Um, it just will depend on the materials. So it will automatically default to your graphics tab over here. Um, what this tab will do um, is set up your material to what is actually being seen within the model space. So this doesn't have anything to do with um, what is actually rendered or what type of physical appearance that um, material will have. This is strictly what does this look like from a 2D view in my graphics on floor plans, elevations, ceiling plans, um, the have you, right? Um, so the first option um, you guys have is you guys can choose if you guys want it to have a shaded color um, and you guys can or you guys can also select to have the rendered appearance, which we'll take a look at um, here in a second. So that's the first option. Um, starting off, you guys can normally just leave this as is. You normally don't have to touch this. The one that you guys will probably touch, depending on what type of drawings you guys are working on in Revit, is your surface pattern. So... Um, for your surface pattern um, underneath your foreground, this is what it will look like in a 2D view. So for us, if we were to select this material to go on, let's just say a floor, for instance, once we select this material and we come out of our material browser, um, we will see this surface pattern in our 2D view here. But if we were to render that view we would not see this surface pattern we would see whatever appearance we have under this tab okay so i hope that makes sense here you guys can also choose to choose a background pattern which will be laid underneath your foreground here and you guys also have the option to choose let's just say if you guys were doing a section cut um through that if you guys wanted to have a pattern for that as well that may be good if you guys are doing de detail drawings um in revit um this may come in handy so just know if you guys are either not seeing a pattern within your model space or you you guys um, are seeing a pattern that you don't want this is where you guys will come in to change that so if you guys come down to pattern and you guys click within this box you guys are able to change what that surface pattern is you guys can also change it to just none um, so um, once you guys do that, you guys can hit OK, and that will bring you back here. So that's just kind of the beginning mode of getting into materials and the graphics to understand um, what you guys, again, will mostly, <clears throat> excuse me, mostly be paying attention to is what's happening with your surface pattern here. Now, the next tab is going to be your appearance tab. And this will give you guys a um, kind of a preview of what that material will look like rendered. Now, of course, this is just a quick, um, a quick pattern um, that Revit places up here. Of course, it will look a lot better um, once it's actually rendered than what's here, but it still gives you guys kind of something to go off of. So the first thing is kind of an image of what that pattern will look like. And then what I like to say for um, what tabs and what information you guys are able to change for that material will strictly depend on the material that you guys have chosen. So depending on the material, this these options will change. So for instance, right now we have our um, tile porcelain selected. If I was to select these wood planks, that again, those options will change. So we don't have as many options as we had when we were in our porcelain, right? So it looks like they may have given us another option for finish bumps. So um, if you guys are not liking what it looks like in the preview, you do have the option to go in, click on these flyouts, and change um, what that actually looks like here um, in your preview. So again, I'm not gonna go through all of these because again, it is dependent on the material. Um, so these will always change, but I just like to say it's easier to kind of get in here, play around with some of the materials, see how you like um, when they render, what happens if you guys start to play around with some of these options. Um, I think it's best to kind of go in and just kind of play around with it. 
but that is the appearance here. You guys also have two um, other options here, which is going to be your physical tab and your thermal tab. So these are going to come into play if you are doing anything with um, MEP or running numbers in Revit. These two tabs are going to be um, really important for that just to see what those materials are giving off. If you're looking for um, the reflectivity, if you're looking for, you know, this information, density, thermal um, information, you guys are going to find it here for those materials. So the Again, depending on the project, what you guys are actually doing in Revit, these tabs may be important, but for beginners that are just kind of starting off, your most important tabs are going to be your appearance tab and your graphics tab. You guys will also have an identity tab, and this is just um, what type of descriptive information um this material is so a lot of times you guys will see kind of like a short description of what that material is it may include color it may include size um and then you guys will also see probably nine times out of ten what type of class that um falls in so if it's a custom material a lot of people will just put generic if you actually have a class for that material you guys can put that in there as well so that is pretty much the information that you guys are looking at when you are diving into the material browser. So let's kind of get into um, your asset browser. And if we wanted to, let's just say, create a custom, um, not a custom material, but if we wanted to bring in um, a material that we did not see here on our project um, browser here, okay? So the first thing that we're going to want to do is um, go down to your circle and your plus sign here and you want to click on the fly out. Now what I'm going to do just to show you guys the asset browser is I'm going to go ahead and create a new material. So you want to click on that. Once you click on new material, it will bring up default new material. If you guys right click on that, you guys are able to rename that. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here and rename. And just for purpose of example, I'm just going to type this in as wall, wall finish, right? <clears throat> just for purpose of example. Of course, you guys will name it whatever your material is. Once I've renamed it, I'm just going to click, just click anywhere to kind of come out of that. I do want you guys to notice what happened once I renamed it. It move that material into alphabetical order. So once you guys rename and it's for some odd reason, Revit doesn't have that material selected anymore, just go to where you guys have named it and it should be there. So right now, mine's is still selected. Once it's selected, pay attention to what's happening here um, in my right hand side menu here so i still have my identity here if i wanted to i can type in a description of what that material is i can change the class um if i for instance was doing a floor material and i wanted a pattern i would come in and maybe change what i wanted that to be and then under appearance um, it will bring up, you know, what that default appearance is, which is nothing right now, right? Because we're doing a, it's just a new default material, right? So we want to get something within this appearance box, right? So that is where your asset browser comes into play. So what I want to do right now is I actually want to click on that asset browser it will bring up an entire new material browser for you so revit may need to think a little bit to bring it up so once you guys open up this material browser um where you guys will nine times out of ten go to is your appearance library right so if we're rendering we want to make sure that we're selecting materials that actually has a appearance underneath aspect right so if i click on the fly out next to appearance library it will bring up a lot of different options of material categories that i can select right if i also if i wanted to just search a particular material i am able to also do that as well if i click in my search box i can type in what that material um, that i'm looking for hit enter and it will bring up the available options for me to select and choose from 
Okay, so for instance, if I wanted to select, let's just go with a wall paint. I can either click on wall paint and it will start to bring up the available options. I can also click on the flyout and see what additional options I have to choose from. So I can select glossy, matte if I wanted to. So for instance, if I wanted to um, select, let's just say this dark green um, wall paint, right? A few things I wanna look for. First off, I wanna make sure that it says appearance, especially if I'm rendering. So underneath aspect, you always wanna see appearance because sometimes you can um, select a material from here that may not be appearance, but it has some type of physical attributes or thermal attributes that speaks to those other two tabs that we had, right? So we want to make sure that we see appearance. Once we've selected the material that we want, we want to come over and we want to click on these two arrows here. Once we click on those two arrows, you guys are going to notice over here that now the attributes that are attached to this material is now attached to my wall finish material that I created. So if I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and click a X to come out of this. It will bring me back to my materials and I have now created a wall finish material that has a dark green finish material here, right? Finished paint material. So we'll let Revit kind of update a little bit and bring up our preview here. But while we're doing that, um, these are the options that I have available that I can change on this material. Again, depending on what I'm looking for, um, I can come in, let's just say I wanted this to be a little bit more of a lighter green. I'm able to adjust that, hit OK. Revit will give me another preview of what that looks like. I can also change if I wanted this to be another type of um, finish, I can do that as well. So again, depending on the material, your options will change. So if I'm happy with this finish that I've created, I'm able to now find this if I wanted to. So if I wanna hit okay, that will bring me out of my material browser. If I was to, let's just say, create just a wall here to apply that finish to, I'm just gonna do a simple wall here. And if I was to now select that wall, I could go into edit type, go to my structure, hit the edit tab, come into my wall, and I have a I have a video on how you guys can go about um, adding in your options and how to kind of um, go about editing your wall. So if you guys have not seen that video, um, take a look at that. I'm just going to quickly put something in here so that I can show you guys the material. Right. So once I have my material um, layer there, I can click in my by category, click on the three dots. And my finish that I created is now in that material browser. Right. So I can select that finish that I've um, added. I can hit OK and it will have that material applied to that finish. So I can hit OK to come out of that. Rabbit's thinking. And I'm going to hit OK one more time to come out. And now, if I was to go to a 3D view, And I was to change my visual style here. Let's just do realistic. Let's see if we can get Revit to bring this up here for us. And it will think, so um, I don't want you guys to be alarmed on um, Revit taking a while when you guys are doing um, a realistic view and an elevation or a 3D 
Brevard will need to think about it. But if we look at our wall here, we see that material added. So that is the basics of how you guys go about um, navigating your material browser, adding one, or um, creating a new material that's not there. Please like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the um, video, you guys found it helpful, and please leave a comment for videos you guys would like.